In this video, we're going to talk about reaction coordinate diagrams, thermodynamics, and kinetics. We're also going to relate all of this to acid-base reactions. One of the things that you may have noticed as we are talking about acid-base reactions is that neutral species are favored. So water, shown here, would not react with water to form H3O plus, or hydronium, and hydroxide. This just wouldn't happen. And you can see that we're looking at the KEQ for this reaction, and the KEQ is very small. We're also looking at something called the delta G naught for the reaction. The delta G naught for the reaction is plus 80 kilojoules per mole. We also have this thing down here called a reaction coordinate diagram. So let's go over a few things and then we'll come back and look at this diagram. First, let's go over Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy is identified with a letter G and it is the energy associated with a chemical reaction that can be used to do work. You can see here that we can calculate the standard state Gibbs free energy for a reaction or the delta G naught of the reaction by taking the delta G naught of the products, subtracting the delta G naught of the reactants, and that will get us to the standard state Gibbs free energy for the reaction. This is the change in the free energy of the reaction. The naught stands for standard conditions. And standard conditions are identified as 298K, one atmosphere, and one mole per liter. The delta stands for change, and the G we just identified as the Gibbs free energy, and then that stands for the reaction. This is also equal to negative RT ln KEQ. R, of course, is a constant. T is temperature. LN is natural log. And KEQ is the equilibrium constant for the reaction. So why is it important that we understand the energy associated with the reaction? Well, this is going to help us understand if the reaction is going to proceed or not. Let's look at the effect of KEQ on the delta G naught of the reaction. We can see the equation that we just talked about before. And what we learn from this is that when KEQ is big or greater than one, that means that our delta G of our reaction is going to be negative or very small. What this means is that the products are more stable than the reactants. We call this reaction spontaneous and we say that the reaction is exergonic, or energy is being released or going out. This is a favored reaction, one that can occur. When KEQ is less than one, and if you wanted to plug in a value of KEQ that's less than one into this equation, what you would get is a positive delta G. Delta G will be greater than zero. This means that the reactants are more stable than the products, and the reaction is non-spontaneous. The reaction is also endergonic, meaning that it requires energy, or energy goes in. This type of reaction is not favored. This is an uphill reaction. You might equate these situations to trying to ride a bike. If you are going uphill, that is the situation down here where KEQ is less than one. It is non-spontaneous. You are going to have to put a lot of energy in to get your bike up the hill. When KEQ is greater than one, that it would be downhill. You're riding your bike downhill. Delta G reaction is also related to energy and enthalpy, as you can see in this equation here. H is enthalpy, T is temperature, and S is entropy. Remember that delta sign means change. So the delta H naught of our reaction is the standard enthalpy difference between the reactants and the products. When the enthalpy is large, greater than zero, the reaction absorbs heat 
And these are the reactions that we identify as being endothermic. They actually might get a little cold. When your enthalpy is less than zero or negative, the reaction releases heat or is exothermic. And these reactions would heat up or get hot. And we identified S as the entropy, so delta S naught is the standard entropy difference between the reactants and the products here. We're not going to go into too much detail about entropy at this point. I just wanted to let you know what it is. Okay, now let's apply what we've learned about energy to reaction coordinate diagrams. Reaction coordinate diagrams shows us the progress along a reaction pathway. It gives us information about both the therm thermodynamics of the reaction and the kinetics of the reaction. The reactants are going to be on the left of the reaction coordinate diagram and the products are on the right. When we talk about thermodynamics, conceptually in organic chemistry, we don't usually tend to use a lot of equations. We just want to know how much product is formed. And when we talk about kinetics, we just want to know how fast the product is formed. That's really what we're trying to get out of this. So this is a very simple reaction coordinate diagram for a one-step reaction. You can see the reactants on the left and the products on the right. In this case, the energy for the reactants and the energy for the products is equal because they are at the same height. Notice on the left, our y-axis here is energy. And so the energy for these two reactants and products is equal. In the middle, this hump over here is a transition state. This is between the reactants and the products where you have your bo bonds forming. So they are partially broken and partially formed. If we have a multi-step reaction, we'll have a hump or a transition state for every step. So let's look at delta G and our organic reactions. Here's our equation for delta G. And let's look at a reaction coordinate diagram for an exergonic reaction. Remember, an exergonic reaction is going to release energy. This is going to be our spontaneous reaction. Now see the reactants are higher in energy than the products. So this is our delta G naught, or our change in energy for the reaction. Notice that delta G naught is negative. That means that KEQ is big. If we put it back into our equation over here, when KEQ is big, delta G naught is negative. In this situation, the products are favored. This is our downhill situation. In an endergonic reaction, you can see that the products are higher in energy than the reactants. In this situation, delta G is positive meaning that we had to get energy or put energy in to get this reaction to work. Our KEQ is less than one in this situation. The reactants are favored, and so this reaction is an uphill reaction. This is going to be harder to do. We need to put energy in to get this reaction to go. Okay, now let's talk about reaction rate. We're gonna talk about delta G double dagger. It's the free energy of activation. And you can see in this reaction here, it is the energy required to get to the top of that hill or the transition state. If we compare it to a slower reaction, you can see that delta G double dagger is bigger. In these examples, the energy of the reactants and the energy of the products are the same. Both of these are exergonic reactions going downhill we have a negative delta G naught, but the hump is different in, in height. So a faster reaction has a smaller delta G double dagger or a smaller free energy of activation. This means that this reaction is gonna proceed a lot faster. And again, if you think about this as a bike, if you're biking up this hill and you have a small hill, it's gonna be a lot faster than if you have to go up a much higher hill. So that's why we have our faster reaction over here on the left. 
Now we know a little bit about reaction coordinate diagrams. We can go back and look at some. So here's a reaction coordinate diagram for a proton transfer reaction. What we see here is HCl reacting with hydroxide. In this case, HCl is a strong acid. Hydroxide is a strong base. And you can see that the energy of the reactants is much higher than the energy of the products. The overall free energy change is negative. So this reaction is going to be spontaneous or favored. We can think of this as a downhill reaction. Now what about that first slide that we looked at at the beginning of the lecture? Now we can look at this reaction and recognize that the delta G naught of the reaction is positive or this reaction is going uphill. This is going to require energy for this to happen. You can see that the charged products over here are less stable than the reactants. This is going to require energy to form these products and this is not favored. That means the neutral species or the reactants are significantly preferred over the charged species. Okay, this concludes our brief overview of thermodynamics, kinetics, and reaction coordinate diagrams.